everyone. Thanks for joining DevSecOps, the good, the bad, the ugly. I have my friend here, Madhu. Madhu, can you introduce yourself? Hey, hi, Zach. Uh, nice to meet you, finally. <laughs> so myself, Madhu Akla. I work currently at Zibia as a cloud native security specialist. I have like previous amount of experience working on container security and breaking into stuff and securing the clusters and cloud native infrastructure. And uh, I had been presenting my research at a bunch of conferences like Black Hat, DEF CON, and uh, all over the world with community. Yep. And I would love to share my experiences here. No, that's great. And I know one of the, the things that you, you primarily talk on is how do you break into stuff, right? Especially in, contain, in the realm of containers and Kubernetes. Can you talk a little bit on that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so it's kind of, uh, I started tinkering when I was experimenting or learning in the Dockers. So it's kind of, you have a multiple way of approaches things to break into the stuff. So one thing maybe like most of the things uh, tend in fall in misconfigurations, like uh, so the developer or the, the system administration has pushed the image, uh, which might not have misconfigurations, like it's running with a root privilege. So you end up using some kind of known exploit or something to get a root uh, of the system or some kind of privileges which you lack in especially if you take Kubernetes, like you lack of some misconfigured privileges, which you end up getting full access of the cluster. Right, right. right. Yeah. So, so with that, Mandu, that, that actually leads into kind of the first question. So, you know, and when I think of container scanning, right, or container security, you got a lot of it once it's built, but what are some of the things that you can do before, right, in regards to development best, best practices with ensuring that they're, you're hardening before the fact? Uh, so best practices in terms of before pipeline means which because the entire reason of Docker come into the picture because once you build the Docker container or container, it should run everywhere, which means it has to be hardened or secured before the pipeline, right? Because right. which is running in the developers. So some of the things maybe you look at like because one of the key thing is your code is going into the Docker container or container in this context, right? So looking for known vulnerabilities in your dependencies like and uh, looking for the any hard-coded secrets because developers think that this code is going into the private registry or the container is local to the company but they try to put literally secrets of aws so right. they end up exposing right. the entire aws account with simple misconfiguration or code commits yeah. and also looking for known vulnerabilities like cas benchmarks using tools like docl it's a simple yeah. utility you can run against your container to list some of the best practices maybe you, and uh, then you can pushing into the pipeline, maybe again, it add a bunch of more security checks, uh, which will come. And I know a lot of your, your talks, Madhu, you, you provide a lot of open source. I know you, you, you contribute in the open source community as well as uh, um, you recommend specific toolings. Is there anything that you could recommend in regards to uh, some of those things that you talked about? So say like the secrets, how, how to make sure you're not having those. Yeah. <laughs> so this is one of them, I think not only specific to Docker or containers, uh, it's a generic thing. I have seen bunch of tools, maybe it's not a uh, specifically thing. Uh, Truffle hog is one of them maybe, and uh, there are Git secrets and like there are multiple tools. Right. The main idea is it's not only about the tool that uh, you make sure you have the checks in place so that uh, you are not leaking some sensitive information uh, while making it as a containerized. Okay. Where do you typically, what part of the, the process um, or the software development life cycle do you like to put those checks into, into place? Uh, ideally, it should be uh, from the thinking, like developers should, before committing or something, it should be aware. It's kind of educational or the, the security awareness, I can say education. And second thing is maybe in the pipeline, like uh, sometimes the IDEs also have maybe linters. You maybe look at like integrated into your IDEs if you go next level, maybe in your Git hooks or maybe in your pipelines saying that, uh, make sure you scan or lint for these known entropies or secrets and uh, make sure you can have a build checks in the pipeline also. Mm -hmm. And still, if you wanted to go beyond, maybe you can put a runtime also keep looking at the, the things. Right, now that's great. Now that was actually my next question is, okay, you know, so once you've, you've already built the container, how do you ensure that it stays secure? Ah, uh, this is kind of typically a tough question because uh, it's it's a kind of layered approach in containers uh, because uh, it's come kind of comes in three layers like uh, like supply chain is one of them right like you push the container or pull the container into a registry this code going into the container and putting into the the registry 
is one thing. And again, deploying this container into some kind of orchestration or engine like Kubernetes is another thing, which is kind of infrastructure or configurations. And right. running the containers in the cluster or the orchestration is another layer. It's kind of different layers you think about. Right. Yeah. It's kind of very complicated. Uh, and especially with these modern technologies evolving like extremely fast. Like I have done a CKA like in the previous year, May. And after three months, there is a new release, which I have to learn a lot of things, <laughs> mm -hmm. which I am still not able to catch up, right? right. So I think uh, you, if you follow a layered approach uh, uh, in terms of securing this stuff, uh, it would be really added benefits. And uh, following some of the best practices will be a good start, like CAS benchmarks for both Docker and Kubernetes. And uh, looking at basic security hygiene, like uh, scanning for the images for security issues and hardening them and uh, basic node level security and network security of your cluster. And uh, what you say, like logging, monitoring. So these kind of things will at least ensure you get started into the, the security of this modern infrastructure. Then you can keep adding or building on top of it. And it's just kind of off the cuff here. I do. I mean, so what, what types of, of things, somebody that's just starting, especially into Kubernetes, they're trying to, um, you know, push their organization towards that. Um, what types of things should they, should they really focus on grasping first, right? To ensure that they don't, you know, maybe fall into some common patterns that, that you see other people have, have fallen into. Yeah, that's actually a good question. I mean, it's a, pretty much so many people ask me in communities also. Right. Uh, the main problem, especially coming from the security background, uh, people tend to focus uh, or doesn't have much awareness in the technology perspective. Like it comes from the security background where there doesn't have much awareness about the tool or technology, how they works. So right. understanding more about the technology uh, for the security people is really good idea yeah. uh, because they can provide their more value into the whatever the suggestions or those mm -hmm. uh, evangelism they are providing, right? Mm -hmm. So understanding technology is one of the useful thing. Then uh, after that, looking at what are the common input for the tool or technology and uh, what are the common best practices, first of all, which is following, then they can follow based on the, which are the critical resources in the system so that they can focus on that. For example, maybe for us, we are using some, the managed cluster, provided by one of the cloud provider, then you might focus on what are the critical aspect you wanted to focus, whether you have to focus on the data or like the container uh, configurations. So yep. you can basically pick it up on that. Uh, that's great. And I think you've given quite a few talks. Don't, do you have some resources that you can share in, in regards to, to helping people with that? Yeah. Uh, Punjab, I think some of them recently, I think given in uh, all data apps, I think, uh, which uh, I'm also going to present one. Okay. Uh, so I have a bunch of references and uh, as well as training content, which is in my GitHub as well as the slide deck. So maybe I think I'll give you references in the comments or something. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, if you could share that, um, that'd be great resources to, uh, for people that are, are, are driving towards um, that, that transformation in their company. Um, kind of the final, I guess, the final question that I have for you, what, what, what talk are you giving at All Day DevOps? Uh, so that's kind of a little uh, focusing, same on again, container security. Yeah. It's yep. kind of mainly focusing two areas of uh, container security for blue and red teams, like how defenders can use or implement secure container practices, as well as like offensive security people, how can they go about attacking the stuff? That's awesome. Yeah. So if you're interested in learning more from Adu, and I know you're going to have slides and, and it'll be a full presentation there. Um, so, so be sure to, um, uh, to tune in for that. What time are, is your talk? Uh, it's in 12. 30 CET, uh, I'm sure I think. Oh, 30, uh, okay, yeah. okay, all right. It's kind of second talk in the, the conference, but uh, there are so many talks, I'm pretty much excited. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, well, hey, look forward to seeing you there on Friday, and thanks for being willing to come on and, and, and share, my dude, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much, Jack.